What is up, everybody? Welcome to kind of an impromptu episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. I am your host, Nick, also known as Clickwid. And don't worry, guys, we are going to be putting out a full episode where we'll go over all the games and kind of the disappointments that we had in Week 14 and some of the players that broke out and really helped us win our fantasy games. Uh, and then we're also going to, of course, look forward to Week 15. But today, there were two big news stories that broke regarding quarterbacks in the NFL, the first one of which had to do with Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton, who had his biggest game of the season, as far as I can remember anyway, this past week against the New Orleans Saints, a monster game, ran for a couple touchdowns, looked great passing the ball as well, which is something that he has done pretty inconsistently this year and really throughout his career, to be completely honest. So it was nice to see him put up good fantasy numbers uh, against the Saints, but unfortunately, this morning he was involved in a car accident near the Carolina Panthers. Panthers field. Uh, he was, t- his. I guess, apparently his actual car or his SUV flipped multiple times, which is a very dangerous thing, of course, as everybody knows. He was stretchered away from the accident. There were kind of weird flick, you know, back and forth flickering opinions on exactly what happened here. We did see a picture of Cam Newton kind of laying on the ground and he was almost smiling or I don't know if he was smiling or kind of grimacing in pain. It was kind of a weird picture. He's on the like the sidewalk next to somebody uh, after the accident. But then there was also video of him being set up onto a stretcher and loaded into an ambulance and brought to the hospital. Apparently he is going to stay at the hospital through the evening and he will probably be really least tomorrow, but we first got information that there really wasn't any serious injuries that he, that he had sustained. Um, also, of course, if you guys didn't know, the other person that was in the accident, kind of similar injuries, but sounds like they are going to be okay as well if you're interested in that. It's you know important to note, but Cam Newton did uh, actually end up sustaining two fractured bones in his back. That came out later this afternoon, so we kind of found that out, and Unfortunately, this is not a good diagnosis for Carolina Panthers fans or for fantasy owners because Cam Newton is, of course, the type of player that really relies on his physicality to be a big-time fantasy asset and really an NFL quarterback. He's a big player. He runs the ball a lot more than most quarterbacks do, and he especially runs near the end zone, which, of course, makes him a viable fantasy player every single week. But if he's not able to be 100% and he has to worry about his back and taking hits and things like that, this is going to make him potentially gun shy if he plays. Now, what I will say is that I don't believe that he will play this Sunday for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, This is a very similar injury to the one that Tony Romo sustained a few weeks back. Now, of course, Romo's was sustained on the field. Newton's in an accident. But they're very, very similar in that there were multiple fractured bones in the back, nothing major broken, but definitely bad enough that it's probably not going to allow him to play this week. Romo did sit out an entire game, and even when he got back, he was not anywhere near 100%. He wasn't rotating fully on his throws. He wasn't getting the full extension, and of course, he did kind of seem a little bit gun-shy to take hits as well. So this is something that we could be seeing with Cam Newton when, if and when he does come back this season. I hope that he is able to make a return this season because, like I said, he played his best game in my opinion, of the season this past week. Uh, really a gritty performance for him in a game that they really had to win to even stay in a in the realm of possibility of a playoff appearance. The Panthers will be setting up their game plan for Sunday's game over the next day or two. So unfortunately, they kind of have to almost assume that Newton is not going to play would be my assumption. And they will likely turn to Derek Anderson to be their quarterback this week. Now, of course, if Newton is, for whatever reason, fully medical, medically cleared, I wouldn't be surprised if he does end up on the field, but then they, it could kind of be a limited type of thing. Um, they could try and avoid him getting hit in a lot of different ways, you know, th- shorter passes and maybe things that aren't going to lead to as much fantasy success, but maybe could be more based around running the football with the running backs that they have there. Jonathan Stewart also had a nice game this past week as well, so I would expect that they rely on him quite a bit this week. Now, it's worth Worth noting that if Derek Anderson does play, he does seem to have a fairly good connection with Kelvin Benjamin. He did throw him a couple of touchdowns earlier this season in limited playing time, so it's definitely something where I would not be significantly downgrading Kelvin Benjamin on your fantasy radar. He should still remain in your lineup this week. This is an offense that really, it, the quarterback position as far as passing the ball, in my opinion, isn't really going to change a whole lot. Of course, Newton does have a big arm, but so does Derek Anderson. Don't forget that Derek Anderson was at one point a pretty decent fantasy quarterback himself. 
I wouldn't be trotting him out there as your fantasy quarterback this week. But what I will say, though, again, is that I wouldn't necessarily be downgrading your Greg Olsons or your Kelvin Benjamins significantly. They should remain in your lineup. So if you are a Cam Newton owner and you're looking for someone else to take over as your fantasy quarterback this week, I would actually recommend that you take a look into the AFC at a guy who is going to be getting his first appearance as far as the start goes in the NFL this week, and that is, of course, Johnny Manziel. Big, big time stuff coming out of Cleveland today. He was announced as the starter. They will be sitting Brian Hoyer, who has led them into playoff contention for the first time in many, many years, to be honest with you guys. Uh, The Browns have been a bad, bad team, so it's been interesting to watch them kind of develop under Brian Hoyer, but the honest truth is that the guy has not been good over the past four or five games. He's been one of the absolute worst statistical starting quarterbacks during that span. Uh, One touchdown, I think, I saw over the past, what, three or four games. It's just, it's not been good. And he certainly hasn't been connecting with Josh Gordon like we expected him to. Gordon looks like he's fully healthy, but I don't know if it's just the two of them are not on the same page or if uh, Hoyer just isn't comfortable or I don't know what the, exactly what the situation is. But I do know that he is not going to be starting for them on Sunday. It is going to be Johnny Football. It's interesting, guys. Um, Johnny Manziel is the kind of guy who could potentially be a pretty solid fantasy asset, to be honest. Uh, Earlier in the year, we talked about this. He's not necessarily going to be throwing the ball 50 times a game, but he could end up throwing the ball 30 times a game. This is going to be a tough matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals, an interdivision matchup, one that the Browns absolutely must win. They cannot afford to lose this if they want to potentially compete for the division title this year. So Johnny Manziel is, in my opinion, going to be given some opportunities to throw the ball, but almost more importantly, I think he's going to have plenty of opportunities to run the ball. I would not be surprised to see them set up design coordinators quarterback runs for Manziel, and that could translate into some pretty decent fantasy points. We saw him in the limited playing time that he got earlier this season, a couple of weeks ago, uh, where he came in late in the game. He did run for a touchdown, so I think that Manziel is somebody that, a lot like Cam Newton, could give you some fantasy value in the running game and kind of boost up what might be some lesser than average passing attributes or passing statistics for fantasy. But even still, even if he doesn't put up great fantasy numbers from the passing standpoint, if he throws for, let's say, 200 yards and a touchdown, if he also rushes for 50 yards and a touchdown, that makes him suddenly a very nice fantasy asset so long as he doesn't throw multiple interceptions. And I think Manziel is somebody that should be able to give you some decent fantasy value this week and and really going forward, to be honest. Uh, This division, the AFC North, does not have good fantasy defenses against the pass, and that's what he'll primarily be playing against here in the final three weeks of the season. Uh, They do have some division games that I think he can exploit, and I think the Bengals are a team that he can potentially put up decent numbers against. They're not a bad defense against the pass, but they're not a particularly good one either. So my personal opinion, you go out there, if you've got Cam Newton and Johnny Manziel is on your waiver wire and there really isn't anybody else, you know, you've got like your, um, you know, your Jake Lockers and and Geno Smiths and, and those type of guys out there and Johnny Manziel still sitting out there in your waiver wire, I think you kind of have to make him your number one waiver wire priority this week. I would certainly start him over Derek Anderson, and I would just roll the dice with him. I know it's fantasy playoff time, but we're past the trade deadline, and if you've been relying on Cam Newton, now is the time to go out there and get Johnny Football, put him into your lineup, and just see what happens. Uh, All I can do for you guys is give you the analysis that I have here. I think that this is going to be a good fantasy move, at least, for the Cleveland Browns. I think that they will be able to put up more total fantasy points under Johnny Johnny Manziel than they did under Brian Hoyer. So that should be a good thing for all of us who are heading into our fantasy playoffs or or are already in our fantasy playoffs. So thank you guys so much. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about these two situations. Do you think Cam Newton is somebody that uh, will play this week? Do you think that he is somebody that you want to still start going forward if he does miss this week? Are you going to be hesitant to have him in your lineup in week 16? And also with Johnny Football, are you excited to put him into your fantasy lineup? Are you going out there and picking him up immediately for especially your dynasty leagues? If he's if he's unowned, I, I would certainly definitely make him a number one fantasy uh, priority. Or just in your regular standard uh, redraft leagues, are you still going to be out there picking up Johnny Manziel? Are you risking it here in week 15? Let me know, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like button. That's how I'll know if you guys are liking this type of content. And I'll try and put out more of it as the season goes on. 
and especially in the off season and going into the 2015 NFL season. I'm going to try and do more of these quick hitting type of fantasy football shows for you guys so that you can get some good information and maybe not have to sit through an entire 45 minute podcast. Maybe I can try and split it up into more smaller edible type of uh, videos for you guys going forward. So let me know if you like this setup and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.